Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Today our topic is labeling theory. So let's dissect this topic in complete depth. Labeling theory focuses on how other people's opinions can influence the way we think about ourselves. More specifically, labeling theory says that when other people see and define us as criminal, that's exactly what we become. We change our self-concept to fit what other people think of us, and if they give us the label of a criminal, we will ultimately behave according to that label. In other words, we will become offenders because other people say that we are offenders by putting labels on us. These labels can be of any type. It could be the label of a liar, the label of thief, the label of drug peddler, and so on. When a society puts such a label on any individual, then the individual starts doing exactly what they was labeled more openly they basically starts identifying themselves according to those labels and builds their self image according to that label we develop self perception according to the label that the society has given to them resultantly the chances for such a person's involvement in criminal activities increase because they starts considering their image according to the label which has been given by the society So this become more dangerous when a person starts thinking himself as a criminal and no matter how good or bad he does he will always be seen by that label that was given to him by the society Let's take an example of a student who is not performing well in education If teachers and parents starts calling him as a dull minded student then the student accepts that label As a result the student will remain dull throughout his life He will face a number of difficulties in his student and practical life just because of the fact that he has considered himself as a dull-minded person. He will never try to come out of the trap that is powerful or intelligent versus the weak or unintelligible. Initially it was thought that the people of a society become prey of these labels equally without any differences but later on this mantra was proven wrong. Because we can see that those who are powerful and have strong influence in society can get away with almost everything these people don't get caught and they consider them above the law but when the same crime or a mildest crime is committed by individuals who are weaker in society then the law feels obligated to punish them for their crime and thus a label is put on them for rest of their life let's take an example of robbery being done by a poor man and robbery being done by a man from elite class The first one would get the label of thief at once. On the other hand, the second one will not get such a label. If a rich man robs something, then society will not put a label of thief on him. If a poor man is involved in robbery case, then the society will promptly put a label of thief on him. So, there is difference between powerful and weak in this regard also. Now we will study types of labeling. Keep in mind that there are two types of labeling. One is formal labeling and the other one is informal labeling. Formal labels are those given by the juvenile justice system. This includes but is not limited to arrests, sanctions and correctional treatments. Informal labels are labels applied to individuals by someone without the official or professional authority to distinguish between deviant and non-deviant behavior. For example, police caught a criminal and add him in list of criminals. This type of labeling is considered as more strong. The informal labeling is the labeling given by the society. Let's suppose a boy steals something and got red-handed. Society will start considering him as professional thief and any time anything gets stolen, he will be blamed for it. Keep in mind that the concept of labeling theory flourished during 1960s and in 1970s a renowned sociologist Howard Becker wrote a book titled Outsider. This book played an influential role in development of labeling theory till 1970s. This theory had been accepted by the societies. Societies had started considering these labels. So, let's sum up the labeling process in a quick graph. In short, when someone is caught committing a primary act of deviance, this triggers a sequence of events. namely being labeled negatively by society which can then lead to more deviance deviance amplification if this continues the offender may internalize the label and conform to it which then leads to secondary deviance this was all from today's lecture i hope you understood the concept
support our channel by subscribing liking and sharing the video stay blessed